Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome. Today's topic is the 1999 Cleveland Indians MLB season. Again, the tribe was playing home games at Jacobs Field. Uh, their record in 1999 was 97-65, and 65, a tremendous regular season record. They uh, won the America League Central Division by 21 games over the second place Chicago White Sox. And it was their fifth straight America League Central Division title. They had a nice uh, ceremony. When they would clinch, they'd, the players would walk to center field and raise the America League Central Division flag on, this, on, a, fall, on a flagpole. Their winning percentage was 598, really good. You know, that's almost 600, which is tremendous, uh, a tremendous record. For the fifth year in a row, they set an attendance record for the team with 3,468,456 fans. And their consecutive sellout streaks reached 373 games. Again, every game was sold out. The 99 try was the only MLB team since 1950 to score 1,000 runs in the regular season. So they really had a tremendous hitting team. Manny Ramirez had 165 RBIs. Wow. That's, that was the most by any MLB player since Jimmy Fox in 1938. For the old Philadelphia A's. The movie, uh, the movie League of Their Own, was the character Jimmy Dugan, played by Tom Hanks, was based on, on Jimmy Fox, who actually did uh, coach uh, women's pro baseball in the 40s. And Jim, Jimmy Fox retired to Lake, in, here, here in the Cleveland area in Lakewood, Ohio, and uh, he died in 1966. Kaufman Park in Lakewood on Detroit Avenue and has a Jimmy Fox Memorial Baseball Field. So I think that's very interesting. He was, uh, they were honoring his, they named the field after him for the community service he performed. He worked for the Lakewood uh, Recreation Department. Died in 1967. Uh, on July 3rd, Jim Tomey hit the longest Jacobs Field home run, a 511-foot bomb to center field. Ball landed on Eagle Avenue outside Jacobs Field. So the Tribe made the playoffs again, and in the ALDS, they faced the Red Sox. They won the first two games at home, but lost the, the last three games, two in Boston and, and Game 5 at home. It was a big shock, kind of like 1996, where the Indians really were expecting to go deep in the playoffs and hopefully try to win the whole thing. In the ALDS, Jim Tomey had four home runs, and Travis Fryman, Will Cordero, and Harold Baines all hit home runs. They won the first game 3-2, the second game 11-1, and they lost game 3 in Boston 9-3. Game 4, they lost 23-7. Golly. And then the final game, uh, they lost 12-8 uh, at home. Bartolo Colon pitched well in game 1, and Charles Nagy won game 2. Jer in game 3, Jarrett Wright got hit hard. Game four, the floodgates open with those 23 runs. And in game five, Pedro Martinez pitched six innings in relief, shut out, no-hit baseball, and had eight strikeouts. Then after that, the actually the uh, the AL the Red Sox lost the ALCS to the Yankees, who went on to sweep the Braves in the World Series, beating the Braves for this for the second time in in uh, several years. So our era, uh, which uh, this was our era, the late 90s. Became, actually, it became the Yankees era because they won four World Series in five years. Anyways, so be it. Uh, Jim Trainer, uh, I'm sorry, Jim, Jim Warfield, again, was our trainer in 1999. And he was the Indians trainer from 1969 to 2002, a long run, 26 years. No, actually, uh, 36 years. Well, anyway. Uh, well, in this at this point, he was... Uh, well, I'm not sure. Anyway, he's a good guy. Uh, Warfield died on July 16, 2002, three years later, of a brain hemorrhage at age 60. So that was very tragic. And the t in that year, the players wore a JW patch the rest of the year. Uh, by 2002, Indians general manager Mark Shapiro, well, he was the GM, and he said this quote about Jim Warfield. He never missed a day of work in his life. He always had a smile on his face. And he's a lightning rod for energy, positivity, and everything that is good about baseball. Sandy Alomar said, quote, He was like a second father to me. He always tried to put me back together. I'm so sad because Jimmy always was there for me. 
He's one of the finest people I ever met, always kind and caring. So God bless Jim Warfield. Now, in the coaching staff, we had a new uh, first base coach, Brian Graham, who was from San Diego, California, minor league p- player for the A's, Brewers, Tigers, and Tribe, a second baseman. And he was a Tribe minor league manager. He was a 1991 Carolina League Manager of the Year. He also was a coach for the Orioles, uh, and he became a Pirates executive. And since 2013, he's been the director of player development in charge of the minor league system for uh, the Pirates. So he's done very well for himself. Louis Isaac was back as our bullpen coach. Charlie Manuel was back again as our hitting coach. Jeff Newman again was the third base coach. Phil Regan was the pitching coach. Dan Williams, the bullpen catcher. And then another new coach was Clarence Jones, who coached the outfielders. Jones was from Zanesville, Ohio. Right, he was a right fielder, first baseman in his playing career. Played for the Cubs, the Nankai Hawks, and the Osaka Kintetsu Buffaloes from 1967 to 1977. For his Major League Baseball career, he hit 248, two home runs, 16 RBIs. And in Japan, in the Nippon, the Nihon Professional Baseball League, he hit 239 with 246 home runs. So he had some success in Japan, 562 RBIs, seven years playing in Japan. Now, in, uh, in, in, for the team, the, uh, we had uh, Richie Sexton was again in left field, hit 255, 33 home runs, and 108 RBIs. A tremendous year for Richie Sexton. Kenny Lofton was back in center field, hit 301, seven home runs, 39 RBIs, 25 stolen bases, and he made the all-star team. Another fine year for Kenny Lofton. Manny Ramirez played right. He hit 333. Wow. 44 home runs, 165 RBIs. Wow. Made the All Star team. He was the Indians' man of the year, and he won the Gordon Cobbledick Golden Tomahawk Award. So that was just an absolutely incredible year for Manny Ramirez. Travis Fryman was at third base. Uh, he had an off year. He hit 255, 10 home runs, 48 RBIs in only 85 games, so he was injured uh, much part of the year. Omar Vizquel was at short, had a tremendous year, hit 333 also. Five home runs, 62 RBIs, 42 stolen bases. He won another gold glove and made the all-star team. Tremendous year for Omar Vizquel. Now we had a new second baseman, Roberto Alomar, uh, the brother of Sandy Alomar, was Hit 323, 24 home runs, 120 RBIs. Wow, 37 stolen bases. He won another. He won a Gold Glove, and the, he was the also the Silver Slugger for the best hitter at his uh, position. He made the All Star team, and he was also Man of the Year. Roberto Alomar was from Ponce, Puerto Rico. Played for the Padres, Blue Jays, Orioles, Tribe, Mets, White Sox, and Diamondbacks between 1988 and 2004. For his career, he had an even 300. Really good. 2,724 hits, 210 home runs, 1,134 RBIs, and he had 474 stolen bases. And in 2011, he was inducted to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He was an All-Star 12 times. Won World Series with the Blue Jays in 1992 and 1993. Won 10 gold gloves, four silver sluggers. Of course, his brother, he was playing with his brother, Sandy Alomar Jr., our catcher. And their father, Sandy Alomar Sr., was an MLB player. He's currently an advisor for the Blue Jays. He was the 1992 ALCS MVP for the, for the Blue Jays. And with Omar Vizquel, for the time they were together, they had... The Indians had an incredible middle infield def- defense, you know, so those guys just uh, gobbled up ground balls and made double plays. Sometimes one of the guys would glove the ball and they'd uh, throw it to the to second with his glove and it would be caught barehanded by the other guy, throw it to first for the double play. So it was amazing having Roberto uh, Alomar in Cleveland that year. We picked him up as a free agent. Jim Tomey was back at first at 277, 33 home runs, 108 RBIs. He made the All-Star team. Another tremendous year for Jim Tomey. Einar Diaz was our catcher, hit 281, three home runs, 32 RBIs, 11 stolen bases in 119 games. So good year for Einar Diaz. 
Uh, David Justice was the DH at 287, 21 home runs, 88 RBIs. Enrique Wilson hit, uh, now the bench players, Enrique Wilson hit 262, two home runs, 24 RBIs, five stolen bases in 113 games. So he saw a lot of action. Will Cordero was a new guy, hit 299, eight home runs, 32 RBIs in 54 games. Cordero was from Mayaguez, Puerto Rico. He would play left field, shortstop, and first. Played for the Expos, Red Sox, White Sox, Tribe, and Pirates. Also the Marlins and Nationals between 1992 and 2005. For his career, he had 273, 122 home runs, 566 RBIs. Was an all-star for the Expos in 1994 and won a Silver Slugger Award that year. And he was a free agent pickup. Alex Ramirez had a good year, hit 299, three home runs, 18 RBIs in 48 games. Dave Roberts was a new guy, hit 238, two home runs, 12 RBIs, had 11 stolen bases in 41 games. Roberts was from Naha, Okinawa, Japan, an outfielder. This was the beginning of his MLB career, played for the Tribe, Dodgers, Red Sox, Padres, and Giants between 1999 and 2008. For his career, he hit 266, 23 home runs. 213 RBIs, and 243 stolen bases. He won a World Series with the Red Sox in 2004. He was a coach for the Padres from 2011 to 2015, the manager of the Padres in 2015, and he's been the Los Angeles Dodgers manager since 2016 to the present. And in 2016, he, won the, uh, he was the National League Manager of the Year. Robert's father was African-American. His mother was Japanese. And in, 20, in the 2017 World Series, he was the only he became the only MLB manager to make to manage a team to the World Series of Asian descent. In the 2004 ALCS, the Red Sox were down three games to nothing. In, in Game Four, the bottom of the ninth, the Red Sox were down by a run, four to three, and uh, Dave Roberts stole second. He was a pinch runner, and he just barely made it, and then he scored on a hit. That tied the game, and they won that game in the next uh, next three to go to the World Series, and then they won the World Series in four. So that was a key moment, helping the Red Sox uh, win their title in 2004 when he stole second base in uh, game four of the ALCS. Uh, the buff- for the Buffalo Bisons, he had 97 steals, and he's in their Hall of Fame. Uh, and then, of course, the 2016 Dodgers, he was the manager well, the team that made the World Series lost the World Series in seven to the Astros. In 2010, he had Hodgkin's lymphoma, but made a full recovery. Dave Roberts. Sandy Alomar hit 307, six home runs, 25 RBIs in 37 games. Again, he was having injuries, but during the time he played, he did very well. Jacob Cruz hit 330, really good. Three home runs, 17 RBIs in 32 games. Holbert Cabrera hit 189, zero home runs, zero RBIs, three stolen bases in 30 games. Harold Baines was a new guy, hit 271, one home run, 22 RBIs in 28 games. And we picked him up in an August 27th trade from the Orioles. Baines was from Easton, Maryland, a DH right fielder, played for the White Sox, Rangers, A's, Orioles, and Tribe between 1980 and 2001. Long 21-year career. He was an all-star six times. Won a World Series with the White Sox in 2005 as a coach. Was a silver slugger in 1989. And the White Sox retired his number three. He's also in the Orioles Hall of Fame. For his career, he had 289, 2,866 hits, 384 home runs, 1,628 RBIs. And he played as a designated hitter 1,652 games, which is the most all time. So it was cool having Harold Baines on the tribe in 1999. Carlos Baerga came back for, for, for 22 games, hit 228, one home run, five RBIs, one stolen base. We picked him up in a trade on August 16th from the Padres. I remember I went to a game and he played, and I was so happy to have him back at least for a short time. Good old Carlos Baerga, who'd done so well for Cleveland. Uh, John McDonald was a new guy. He hit 333, zero home runs, zero RBIs in 18 games. McDonald was from New London, Connecticut, an infielder, played for the Tribe, Blue Jays, Tigers, Diamondbacks, Pirates, Phillies, Red Sox, and Angels between 1999 and 2014. So this was the beginning of his career. 
For his career, he had 233, 28 home runs, 210 RBIs, a utility infielder who could play second, uh, third, and left field. In the minor leagues for the Akron Arrows, he was very popular with their fans for his great defense. And the, and the tribe uh, promoted that to try to get Akron fans to come to Indians game when, games when he was playing for Cleveland. Uh, on the Blue Jays, his nicknames were Johnny Mac, Magic Man, and Prime Minister of Def- Defense. And McDonald won a World Series with the Red Sox in 2013. John McDonald. Tyler Houston was another new guy. He had 148, one home run, three RBIs in 13 games. We picked him up in an August 31st trade from the Cubs. Houston was from Long Beach, California. Third baseman catcher, played for the Braves, Cubs, Tribe, Brewers, Dodgers, and Phillies between 1996 and 2003. For his career, he had 265, 63 home runs, and 253 RBIs. Tyler Houston. Uh, On the 2000 Brewers, he hit three home runs in one game on July 9th. He's currently the uh, the coach for the Cedar High School baseball team in Cedar, Utah, Tyler Houston. Jeff Manto was back, hit 200, one home run, two RBIs in 12 games. He was a free agent pickup, but we traded him on July 2nd to the Yankees. So he came and left again. Chris Turner was a new guy, hit 190, zero home runs, zero RBIs, one stolen base in 12 games. Turner was from Bowling Green, Kentucky, a catcher, played for the Angels, Royals, Tribe, Yankee, and Yankees between 1993 and 2000, won a World Series with the Yankees in 2000, and for his career he hit 237 with four home runs and 36 RBIs. Chris Turner. Mark Witten uh, was back, hit 160, one home run, four RBIs in eight games. Nice having Mark Witten back. Pat Borders hit 300, zero home runs, three, three RBIs in six games. Russell Branion hit 211, one home run, six RBIs in 11 games. Now in the pitching staff, Dave Berba was our ace. He went 15 and nine with a 4.25 ERA, 30, 34 starts, one complete game, and he won the Frank Gibbons Steve Olin Good Guy Award. Bartolo Colon. Was 18 and 5. You could say he was our ace. We had three strong starting pitchers. Cologne was 18 and 5, 3.95 ERA, um, and he pitched at, well, he had like 30 some starts, one complete game, and a shutout. Charlie Nagy had a fine year, went 17 and 11, 4.95 ERA, 32 starts, and one complete game, and he made the all star team. Jarrett Wright had a tough year, went 8 and 10 with a 6.06 ERA, made 26 starts. Dwight Gooden had a tough year, was 3 and 4 with a 6.26 ERA, 22 starts. 20, 20, 22 starts. Mike Jackson in the bullpen had a fine year, was 3 and 4 with a 4.06 ERA, 72 games pitched. He was in a lot of games, 39 saves. Very good year for Mike Jackson. Steve Reed was 3-2 with a 4.23 ERA in 63 games. So he saw a lot of action. Ricardo Rincon was a new guy. Went 2-3 with a 4.43 ERA in 59 games. Rincon was from Cuitahuac, Veracruz, Mexico. Pitched for the Pirates, Tribe, A's, Cardinals, Mets, and Real, Realeros de Aguas Caliente between 1997 and 2012. His, for his career, he was 21 and 24 with a 3.59 ERA, 400 strikeouts, and 109 holds. He was a middle reliever or setup man. He had 21 saves in his career. In 1997, he was part of a combined no hitter on July 12th. Uh, Francisco Cordova th- uh, threw nine innings of no hit ball, and Rincon pitched the 10th no hit. The bottom of the 10th, Mark Smith hit a walk off home run to win the game, and Rincon. Rincon got the win in that in that no hitter, and he's mentioned multiple times in the movie Moneyball. We picked him up in a trade from the Pirates for Brian Giles, Ricardo Rincon, Paul Shuey had a good year in the bullpen. Went eight and five with a three point five three ERA, seventy two games and six saves. So he pitched a lot. Paul Ossenmacher had a tough year. Went two and one with an eight point one eight ERA in fifty five games. Steve Carse went 10 and 2, very good. 2.97 ERA, also good. 50 games and a save. Mark Langston, 
uh, was a new pitcher. He went one and two with a 5.25 ERA in 25 games. He had five starts, and he was a free agent pickup. Langston was from San Diego, California, pitched for the Mariners, Expos, Angels, Padres, and Tribe. This was the end of his career between 1984 and 1999. For his career, he won 179 games. Very good. Lost 158, a 3.97 ERA, 2,464 strikeouts, four-time All-Star, seven-time Gold Glove. In 1990, he had a combined no-hitter. He pitched the first seven innings of a game, and Mike Witt the last two. Langston picked off 91 runners in his career, fourth all-time. In the 1998 World Series, he, he, he was pitching for the Padres. He's currently an Angels TV guy, and he appeared on the TV show Sabrina the Teenage Witch, appeared as, him, as himself, and played catch with the character Harvey, Mark Langston. Chris Haney was a new pitcher, was 0-2 with a 4.69 ERA in 13 games. He was a free agent pickup from Baltimore, Maryland. Haney pitched for the Expos, Royals, Cubs, Trot, Cubs Tribe and Fukuoka, Fukuoka Day Hawks and the Red Sox between 1991 and 2002. His career record was 38 and 52, a 5.07 ERA, 442 strikeouts. His father, Larry Haney, was an MLB catcher. And uh, some say the decision to exclude him from the postseason roster uh, was, was a part of the tribe's collapse against the Red Sox, the pitching collapse. Chris Haney. Dave Risky was a new pitcher, was 1-1 one one with an 8.36 ERA in 12 games. Risky pitched, this was the beginning of his career, pitched for the Tribe, Red Sox, White Sox, Royals, and Brewers between 1999 and 2010. For his career, he was 20-20 20 20 with a 3.67 ERA and 441 strikeouts. David Risky. Sean DePaula was a new pitcher, was 0-0 with a 4.63 ERA in 11 games. DePaula was from Newton, Massachusetts. Pitched for the Tribe between 1999 and 2002. For his career, he went 1-1 with a 6.75 ERA and 42 strikeouts. Sean DePaula. Jim Brower was a new pitcher. Went 3-1 with a 4.56 ERA in nine games. Brower was from Edina, Minnesota. Pitched for the Tribe, Reds, Expos, Giants, Braves, Padres, Orioles, Yankees, and Hiroshima Toyo Carp between 1999 and 2008. So this was the beginning of his career. He coached the Mariners. Uh, he's been a coach for the Mariners since 2018, since this year, starting this year. His career record was 33-32 and 32 with a 4.67 ERA, 397 strikeouts. And, and in 2009, he pitched in Venezuela and Italy. Jim Brower. Tom Candiotti was back, trying to extend his career. He was 1-1. One with an 11.05 ERA, seven games, two starts, and he was a free agent pickup. Rich DeLucia was 0-1 with a 6.75 ERA in six games, free agent pickup from Reading, Pennsylvania, pitched for the Mariners, Reds, Cardinals, Giants, Angels, and Tribe. This was the end of his career between 1990 and 1999. A 38-51 career record with 4.62 ERA and 502 strikeouts. Rich DeLucia. Tom Martin was 0-1 with an 8.68 ERA in six games. Dave Stevens had no decisions, an ERA of 10.00 in five games. Stevens pitched for the Twins, Cubs, Tribe, and Braves between 1994 and 2000. His career record was 15-16 and 16 with a 6.02 ERA, 170 strikeouts, and 21 saves. Jerry Spradlin was another new pitcher who had no decisions with an 18.00 ERA. Spradlin was from Fullerton, California, pitched for the Reds, Phillies, Tribe, Giants, Royals, and Cubs between 1993 and 2000. And uh, for his career, he was 17 and 19 with a 4.75 ERA and 292 strikeouts. Jim Poole had a record of 1-0 with an 18.00 ERA in three games, free agent pickup. Paul Wagner uh, was a new guy, 1-0 with a 4.15 ERA in three games, also a free agent pickup. Wagner was from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, pitched for the Pirates, Brewers, and Tribe between 1992 and 1999, so this was the end of his career. Record, his career record was 29-45 and 45 with a 4.83 ERA, 452 strikeouts. In 1995, for the Pirates, he, threw a, he had a no-hitter in the ninth with two outs on August 29th, but Andres Gal Galarraga, Galarraga 
broke it up with a single, so he ended up with a one-hitter. Jeff Tam was a new pitcher, who had no decisions, and an ERA of 81.00 in one game. We picked him up on June 18th from in a trade from the Mets. Tam was from Fullerton, California, pitched for the Mets, Tribe, A's, and Blue Jays between 1998 and 2003. Uh, J- Jason Rakers had no decisions and an ERA of 4.50 in one in, pitching in one game. So the 1999 Tribe, yeah, they uh, well, they had a tremendous regular season record. And uh, the uh, the thing is, if you don't win the World Series, you're going to be disappointed. So yeah, we were disappointed, but we would have been disappointed if we lost the ALCS or the World Series. So God bless all those fellows who played for the, the Tribe in 1999. They are forever champions of our hearts. God bless everyone else associated with the Indians in 1999, including the fans. Captains of the Cuyahoga, lovers of Lake Erie, Terminal Tower Power, fans of the Free Stamp Statue, Tribe Rules, Cleveland City of Champions. It's been 70 years since 1948. This is our year. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.